In this video, we're going to be learning about the Declaration of Independence. We often give credit to the writing of the Declaration of Independence to Thomas Jefferson, but there was actually a committee of five who wrote the Declaration. Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Ben Franklin, Robert Livingston, and Roger Sherman. If we zoom in on the picture, you'll see this is John Adams, this is Robert Livingston, this, I believe, is Roger Sherman. I might have had those two reversed. Here is Thomas Jefferson, and here is Ben Franklin. So what is the Declaration? The Declaration is a letter. It was a letter written to the King of England, but it was also written to the colonists in other nations, in particular Spain and France. And it was a letter written to the world. It was a public document that was meant to explain why we as colonists had the right to be free from England. What is the purpose of the Declaration? To justify why we should no longer be ruled by the British monarchy. And it provides many examples of how the British monarchy violated the rights of colonists, according to John Locke's philosophies and beliefs. Here's a picture of King George III of England. He is the king that the colonists went to war against to declare independence for America. So what does the Declaration say? Well, it starts by explaining John Locke's philosophies, which we've talked a lot about here in class. The Declaration basically starts off by saying that all humans have rights to life, liberty, and property, that government should protect our rights, that government should be a social contract, and that bad government should be overthrown and replaced by good government. Why is the Declaration important? Well, it's the document that binds us all as Americans. It states the ideas of American society and our fundamental beliefs. It has also been a model for many groups of people in their quest for natural rights, both in our country and abroad. The Declaration is set up um, in four different parts. The first part is the preamble, otherwise known as a fancy introduction. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Now, there's a little bit of sarcasm in this introduction. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Now, this is a letter going to King George III, and so the men argued, actually, about putting self-evident in the Declaration of Independence. They were kind of mocking the king. Hey, King George, it's obvious that all men are created equal. You're not better than any of us. Your nobles are not better than any of us common people here in America. This is self-evident. It's obvious that we are all created equal. The second part of the Declaration is the belief statement. This is our American creed, our American ideals, what binds you and I together as Americans. It states John Locke's ideas, that we all have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that as Ben Franklin would say, eventually, the Constitution will protect our rights, but it's up to us to catch up and pursue our own happiness. Part 3 lists the complaints against King George. In Part 3, Thomas Jefferson and the four other men who wrote the Declaration with him listed 27 complaints, 27 ways in which King George III violated our rights as colonists, our rights to life, liberty, and property. And the last part of the Constitution is the conclusion where we simply state that we have the right to be free because our rights were violated, because the government under King George III was not a fair or good government, and it was not a social contract that protected our rights. Here are some fun and random facts about the Declaration. The Declaration was voted and it was sent out to press and publication on July 4th, our national holiday. But no one actually signed the original document until August 2nd, 1776, almost a month later. And this is because the men who wrote the Declaration were worried that had the Declaration with signatures fallen into the wrong hand, and had we lost the war to England, those men who wrote the Declaration would have been beheaded. The man who signs the Declaration in the largest print is John Hancock, president of that particular convention. The king receives a copy of the Declaration, but not the original Declaration. The original Declaration we kept and hidden here in America. 
because of course when the king receives his copy of the declaration he's going to be very upset and angry he probably burned it probably tore it up and so copies are sent around the world copies are sent to all the towns there is a copy of the declaration read on the town green here in Ellington Connecticut but the original copy the signed copy stays hidden in Philadelphia signers from Connecticut include Roger Sherman who also helped write the declaration Samuel Huntington and Oliver Wolcott, who is right from Windsor, Connecticut, or South Windsor, Connecticut, which is right next door to us here in Ellington. So here are some conclusions. The Declaration of Independence was written as a public letter. It uses the ideas of John Locke to explain how the purpose of good government is to protect natural rights, promote the common welfare, and prevent a state of nature. Remember, common welfare is the good of all of us, and we all agree in a social contract, or according to the Declaration of Independence, that we all agree to give up certain rights for the protection of others. For example, we all have the right to travel, but we agree to follow the speed limits and the roads of the travel and so that we don't cause accidents. We give up our right to travel freely to follow the speed limit, to stop at stoplights, so that we is good for the common good and we can all travel safely. The ideas written in the Declaration are the beliefs that all of Americans hold in our hearts. It is what unites us and binds us. It holds our nation together as a whole. When we celebrate the 4th of July, when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, when we unite after 9-11. It's the ideas from the Declaration that have been used by many groups of people in our nation and all around the world as they have struggled to gain rights. And you're going to learn this year how many various groups of people over time have struggled to gain their natural rights, not only here in this country, but all around the world. I hope this gives you a better understanding of the Declaration, and I look forward to our activity in class tomorrow.